of seeing the shy manatee. And they go into caves, like the ones in Florida Caverns State Park in Mariana. In the Panhandle, people can walk in the shady longleaf pine forests. Along the coasts, sunbathers and swimmers enjoy barrier island beaches. Barrier islands are low, sandy islands that are close to the coast. And bird watchers love Florida's many wetlands. A wetland is a broad land area covered much of the time by shallow standing water. Guess what? Now I'm right in the middle of the largest wetland in the U.S., the Everglades. There's another one for my list of the biggest, oldest, and tallest. The Everglades. It's huge. To really explore it, you should get in a special fan boat. Did you know that the Everglades is the only place in the world where crocodiles and alligators both live? There are many more alligators in Florida, though, so it's the state's official reptile. A state reptile! Can you believe that? The Everglades is home to many plants and animals that are really rare, such as the Atlantic leatherback turtle and the Florida panther. There are millions of acres of wetlands like the Everglades in Florida. As more and more people moved to Florida, many wetlands were drained and filled, and people built houses, businesses, and vacation resorts. Throughout the 20th century, Florida's population grew very rapidly. Besides all of the tourists who come to Florida, many Americans move to Florida when they retire from working. Other people coming to live in Florida are immigrants. Immigrants are people who leave one country to make their home in another country. South Florida is home to many immigrants from Latin American and Caribbean countries. Since the 1950s, a large number of immigrants have come from Cuba. Cuba is an island country only 90 miles off the coast of Florida. Hello, my name is Eduardo, and I live in Miami, Florida. My parents run a restaurant in Little Havana. That's a part of Miami where there are lots of Cuban coffee shops, stores, and restaurants. I like to buy a garapo. That's juice squeezed from sugar cane. I go to a school that's on the other side of Miami. Since it hardly ever gets cold, our hallways are all outside, under covered walks. After school and homework, I like to play baseball. There are leagues for every age in Miami, and we play almost the whole year round. Lots of professional baseball teams come to Florida to practice in the spring. The only time we can't play baseball is when there are thunderstorms. We get lots of storms in the late afternoon, in the summer. My parents still talk about a huge storm that hit southern Florida. It was called Hurricane Andrew, and they said that the wind was strong enough to lift boats right out of the water. The rain was so heavy that you couldn't even see through it. We go to the beach as much as possible, sometimes every day, especially in the summer when there's a breeze from the ocean. Every year in August, my parents close the restaurant and we drive straight across the state, right through the Everglades on a road called Alligator Alley. We then travel along the Gulf Coast of Florida to stay at my aunt's, right on the beach near St. Petersburg. I love living in Florida because it's usually warm and sunny. There's always lots to do with my friends. Alicia, I'm at the Wildlife Refuge on Merritt Island. It's the location of a major first. The John F. Kennedy Space Center is on this island. Scientists at the Space Center sent the very first man to ever walk on the moon. Someday, I just may go there too. Well, keep your feet on the Earth for now. I hope you'll take a tour of the Space Center to find out what else happens there. My name is Kelvin Manning, and I'm a NASA vehicle manager here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm responsible for preparing the space shuttle for flight, making sure that we deliver to the astronauts the safest and most problem-free vehicle. When the country needed a place to launch rockets, they did a search all over the country, and they decided here on this current location, Merritt Island, because we could launch rockets right over the ocean 
And uh, currently today, we share the land with the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. As a NASA vehicle manager, I'm part of a team of people that help prepare the space shuttles for flight. The work we do on the space shuttle is like a car tune-up, but much more complicated. There's hundreds and hundreds of tasks that have to be accomplished. Once the vehicle is ready for rollout, we have a giant crawler transporter lift up the mobile launch platform and carry it out four miles out to the launch pad. And the astronauts come on launch day, they're loaded into the vehicle. This whole control room will be filled with engineers paying attention to their particular systems and making sure they're safe and ready to proceed for a launch countdown. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, Zero and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis with Destin. By going out into space, that gives us the ability to look back at the planet Earth. We can see the effects of man on the planet. Or we can also look at the natural effects, such as hurricanes and earthquakes on the planet. Our mission is to understand and protect our home planet, to explore the universe and search for life, and to inspire the next generation of explorers as only now. Psst, Alicia, I'm hoping that if I'm really, really quiet, I might catch a glimpse of the Florida panther, which is a state animal. But it's on the endangered list, so I've really got to keep my eyes peeled. Florida's rapid population growth has reduced the available habitat for some animals. Floridians are working to protect unique areas, such as the Everglades, so that there's room in Florida for both people and animals. One of the reasons that Florida's population grew so quickly was the transportation systems people built. In the late 19th century, two northern businessmen built railroads into Florida. And once tourists could reach these southern cities more easily, Resorts and hotels sprang up all along the railroad lines. So far, I've been in cars, on bikes, on water skis, and in kayaks and canoes exploring Florida. Now I'm ready to climb aboard a motorboat. I'm going to see what the Gulf Coast looks like while cruising along in style. On Florida's Gulf Coast, the Intracoastal Waterway is a passageway for boats that is protected from the open ocean by barrier islands. People use the waterway just like a road, sailing or motoring in their boats from one place to another. Marinas all along the route sell gas and groceries, so people traveling on the waterway never have to really leave the water. The Intracoastal Waterway along the Gulf of Mexico enters Florida at the western edge of the Panhandle, near the Pensacola Bay. A bay is a place where the ocean cuts far into the land. The bay at Pensacola serves as a harbor for many ships. There is a U.S. Navy station here, and commercial shipping traffic too. Pensacola was named for a Native American tribe. Traveling eastward, the waterway follows the Santa Rosa Sound. A sound is a narrow stretch of ocean parallel to the coast. To the north of the sound is Eglin Air Force Base, one of the oldest in the U.S. Boating, sport fishing, and the wide beaches of the barrier islands bring many people to live on Florida's panhandle. Most people live in the resort cities along the coasts. From Choctawahatchee Bay to St. Andrews Bay, the waterway goes through a section that was dug out by people. From the bay, the waterway crosses the Apalachicola River, which is the boundary for the central time zone and the eastern time zone in Florida. So if it is 2 o'clock on one side of the Apalachicola River, then it is 3 o'clock on the other side. Apalachicola is a center for oyster harvesting in Florida. It also has a historical claim to fame. A doctor living there came up with a machine to make ice in the 1840s. The machine was the beginning of modern day air conditioning, which was a boon in Florida where it can get very hot. 
This stretch of the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway goes through St. George Sound. Go inland here to see beautiful pine forests and the warm springs at Wakulla. Traveling by water on the Intracoastal Waterway is a great way to see Florida. With its many beaches, wetlands, lakes, and islands, Florida is a unique state. There is more coastline in Florida than any other state, except Alaska. The Atlantic Ocean is on the east, and the Gulf of Mexico is on the west. A large part of Florida's economy is tied to the climate. Warm days bring millions of tourists to Florida, and allow crops like citrus trees to flourish. So, Miguel, looking over the postcards that you sent me from Florida, there are two words that keep coming up. Water and weather. Water and weather? That's good. So with that in mind, I'm going to relax by the water and decide whether to have a nap now or later. 